Hello and welcome. I'm going to show you how to implement touch screen controls for games that rely on arrow keys in Love 2D. Just some basic, uh, you know, screen area to touch solution. And why am I doing this? Uh, because on a forum, on the Love 2D forum, somebody asked for a touch screen, a phone version of a game, and the developer didn't know how to do that. So I'm just going to make it easy, hopefully. So right now this game here with the B, it can move around uh, with the arrow keys and it's happy enough about it because it has a desktop computer, but all its other mobile user B friends can't do jack. So in this example, I already implemented the touch areas and uh, this little, you know, opacity animation uh, to indicate it has been touched because feedback is so frigging important on mobile because touch screens are horrible. But, you know. Uh, all right. So let's take a look at the code. It's quite a lot, but it's all very simple. Tutorial is for you to have code already and we're gonna just inject new code. So if at any point this is useful, you think, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you want more tutorials about game development and stuff in the future. Yeah, write a comment if you have any requests, if anything doesn't work. We're just gonna go ahead and start, but feel free to comment at any point. All right, so the first thing we do is add this bunch of stuff. So these first uh, 14 lines, um, yeah, we're gonna add them into a game that already has at least a player character, which has position, X and Y. You see here, X and Y position and uh, an image file. That's all, all you need to get started with this. And uh, we are gonna fill up the love load function with first, we're gonna just make it easier for us. We're gonna get the width of the screen. We're gonna divide it by 10, save that as a variable as well. This just allows us to have shorter uh, lines. We're, we're gonna do the same for the height of the window. And we need to do this in love load because when a love game starts on, uh, on a mobile device, it changes the resolution automatically and then we, you need to find out what is the resolution actually. All right, and then we have a table of buttons and we're just going with CSS short term. So left, right, top, bottom. Uh, sorry for the wrong order. And let's take a look at the values. So also let's take a look at the, at the project. So uh, left, right? Left is the left button. Let's call them buttons, all right? Or touch area, if you so want. And uh, we need to define the left edge, which is GWP. It stands for one tenth of the width or game width part. I'm just, I just decided part means one tenth. So that's the left edge. Then we need the top edge, which is game height part times two. And this is because we need this area, this, I mean, it's times two because we need the second row for the up button. And then uh, the width is one part and the height is six parts because you see one part, two parts, one part, two parts. So 10 minus four equals six. And the last number is uh, is a timer. The timer for this effect, because again, feedback is f so important. If you if you don't show, ideally you even make a sound. If you don't show the player that they touch something on a touch screen, then they have no idea what happened, because touch screens are wonderful and horrible. I mean, they're just different, right? Um, just imagine a keyboard where you can't feel whether you press it or not. And then we do the same for the right button, top, left, and bottom. All right. <clears throat> so we're done with that. We're just setting some constants and a variable. Then we decide how, how fast we want this, to, this button pressing to be. We can change it to an insane number, like so. Eww. Eww. Yeah. Um. 
just undo that. Right, this frequency, by the way, is uh, you can use it for restricting how often you can click on a button, but you can also allow to click as fast as you can. But the important thing is this time is being used for the animation. Again, animation feedback very important on mobile, more than with keyboards. All right, and then here we have just a sample player. So this is it. This is all we, we need to add to lo uh, love load. So we continue with love draw. Um, yeah, I think that's fine. So here we have the player being drawn. We can ignore that. And all we need to add is we need to draw each of the buttons. So we can loop with, par with pairs, not I pairs, over the table of buttons, B. And uh, we pick the opacity. We pick some number plus the fifth value times 400 because in my example at least the frequency is 0 0.25 so 0 0.25 times 400 will be 100 so 200 is the maximum opacity and 100 is the minimum opacity so that's fine you can ch play around change change stuff you can use colors and then we just set the color and then we just draw the rectangle and the rectangle is defined by the, by the four uh, coordinates well, the two coordinates and the height and the width, uh, the, well, the width and the height, which we stored up here in the buttons uh, table. All right, we are we are in draw. This is it. We're done with draw. Now we need to uh, react to. Now we just need to implement the timer. We do this in love dot update. I I prefer to use dt and the uh, brackets there. Uh, in the parentheses, parentheses, and then we just do a loop again, the the pairs loop over B, and we just count if if uh, the fifth value is larger than zero, then we reduce that value minus delta time, and otherwise we just set it to zero so we don't have negative numbers. So this might be inefficient, but good enough. Now we all yeah, this is we're pretty much done. Here we have an example of what the keyboard key do, keys do. So each press moves them around and stuff. Down here we have the mouse pressed code. So you need to use the function love mouse pressed. It is being used for touch screen touches as well. So that's not a problem. And um, again, we loop over each button and then we check. Uh, and here we get mouse X and Y position. So we just check whether MX and MY are within the boundaries of each of these boxes or buttons. And at the end we check whether the timer of that button is equal to zero. Otherwise we just, we just ignore it. And if all these conditions apply, then we set the timer to the maximum value. This will make the surface flash and it will block it for the duration of the frequency. And then we check again whether we are in top, left, bottom, or right. And now we need to add the code. So if we want top, we need to go to our love.keypressed code, copy the content, and put it into top. Let's just test this. Here we go. Now we can use these buttons already. And now we just do it for the others as well. And now it works into all directions. And because this is really uh, kind of an annoying delay, let's first give it a try if we change the frequency to, let's say, 0.1. Yeah, this feels much nicer. Although the flash is now weaker, so we might want to change the function in love draw. And also let's just try to disable this timer limitation just for the mouse press function. We still want the visual effect. So here now I can click as fast as I want. Just look with the keyboard. 
Now, if you want an effect where you can touch and keep touched the surface, you can just uh, do it as if you had the same with key pressed and key released. You just do love mouse pressed and love mouse released. So, so you just add a new function. Mouse released. Doesn't even matter where it is. Of course, if you want to be specific about it, you might want to consider the location of the release, but this might this makes things much more complicated. So for now, just ignore. Just make any mouse release count. And then you just insert the code, which would do the same. What uh, love key released does. And that's basically it, if you really want that. But but it's easier with, to go with mouse pressed only for now. You can find the code of this tutorial in a gist link. You can find the link in the description. So I hope this helped. Again, please like and subscribe. Write comments about any questions you might have about Love 2D or game development in general. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!